guys, HTG Brian here, and welcome back to another LEGO Indiana Jones The Original Adventure video. This is The Last Crusade, Chapter 1, The Hunt for Sir Richard Freeplay. Maybe one of the longest names of a video in our history. We're going to get all 10 mini kits. We're going to get that true adventure thanks to some red brick stud multipliers. We're also going to get a parcel detector red brick as well. And to start things off, we're going to purchase the 6X stud multiplier red parcel for 3 million studs. That's right, we're going to go ahead and step into the mail room. And because we have enough, we're going to go ahead and buy not only the treasure times 6, but we're also going to pick up the character treasure. Just to maximize our intake with the studage, make sure you turn them both on once you purchase them, assuming you get them both. And then we're ready to go ahead and keep on with the keeping on, but not before grabbing a few studs. Now, quick reminder, we do have quick links down below in the video description to help you get to each and every one of the collectibles throughout this level. Maybe you only need the red parcel brick. Maybe you only need a couple of mini kits. Whatever the case may be, bounce around or get to what you need quickly with those quick links. All right, when you're ready to roll out, go ahead and choose the third movie and the first level for the hunt for Sir Richard Free Play. And let the game go ahead and choose the characters for you, as it will do an excellent job, and you should have everybody you need if you've been following along. Now, it is a minute or three before we get to that first mini kit. It's really not that far, but uh, we're going to go ahead and smash and grab some things. We're also going to pull a couple of levers and bring down some awnings. That's going to help us get to what we need to for the story-based bits here. So uh, in the process of doing this, we actually ring off that true adventure stud requirement status. And uh, now we don't really need to grab too many more, but you know me. If there's a bluesy around, got to get them all. All right, we'll go ahead and use the little flower power spot there. We're actually going to use a female character to jump up. Oh, so high. Up on the ledge, we're going to use somebody to either shriek and blast that glass, or we're going to switch over to our bazooka tube and hit it that way. Either way, do it. Get inside, grab the old mini kit, and be on your way. You can see we're bouncing around over here. We're just simply making it over to the key as we will need this. Now, oftentimes in free play, you can skip over some of the story-based bits and just avoid them because they're not necessarily needed. But in this case, we actually have a free play moment, a mini kit actually, that needs that bridge. So we're gonna go ahead and fulfill that so we can have it later. Speaking of later, I actually had a plan for this boat here. As it turns out, there is a red brick that is tucked away back behind a gate that we're gonna lift up here in a second. And to be honest with you, I thought this was going to be the way to go. I thought, you know what? I'm going to bring this boat over here for easy access. We'll use it later. As it turns out, I couldn't get into it. You'll see in a little bit. But go ahead and use the indie pad to whip it good and get across the gap there. We're going to go ahead and pull out our bazooka tube and blast everything in sight, including a couple of steel grates that have uh, some blue studs down below in the little, in the little holes there. Now, we're going to grab this key, we're going to bring it back and spin to win to complete this bridge as well. So, we needed the one key on the other side to go ahead and give us the indie pad. Now, we need this key to go ahead and complete the bridge. Now, in the far right alcove here, we're going to find a ice cream. It looks like an ice cream uh, tub or whatever you want to call them, like a, a case. We'll smash it, and we'll go ahead and rebuild the bricks, and inside we go with somebody ooh so small. Up top, we got a couple of tables we'll go ahead and smash our way through and really we're trying to get to that mini kit which is up in the middle now next flip the lever before drop it down this is actually going to go ahead and give us access to the back alleyway here which we're going to find a red parcel brick for the parcel detector <laughs> and uh, as you can see i was kind of stuttering here because i tried multiple times to get into that gondola but it's like a gondola not gonna happen <laughs> boo oh okay all right, anyways, we'll go ahead and make our way into the newly found area. We'll flip the lever in the far left corner. It's actually going to give us a nice little elevator. Before using it, we're going to go ahead and whip it good with Andy's whip over here on this pad, which is going to rip down that red parcel parcel detector. That's kind of funny. That's fun to say, right? Red parcel parcel. <laughs> anyways, uh, go ahead and drop the detector down and smash everything in sight. We're going to need to flip a lever and also grab this key. All oh, right, no, we don't have to flip a lever. We just need the key, right? That's right. Let's place the key in place. And we'll go ahead and booyaka shout. It actually gives us a nice little ledge to drop it out the window onto. Grab the parcel brick before moving down. Now we have to use Indy's whip in order to get across this last gap here. 
Go ahead and jump across after dropping it down. And booyah, kosho! Slam it in there. Now, oddly enough, you're seeing me put it in here, right? Like, I officially collected that. At the end of this video, it does not recognize it. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, we have it. We checked. But for whatever reason, it does not show it in the final total. So pretty weird. All right, back up the stairs we go on the left-hand side here. Once we get up there, we'll be able to cross the bridge and make our way over to the right corner, kind of towards the front side of your screen. We're going to switch over to our bazooka tuber. And we're going to blast away the bad guys as well as this glass case on the far right here. <laughs> Whoopsie, I was supposed to take out the bad guys first. but All right, I officially got them all done did. Collect the studs and hop on one of these little mopeds. We're going to ride this little thing all the way over and... I don't know if you guys appreciated my sound effects or not, but that's what my moped sounded like. Even though I never had a moped. Anyways, <laughs> moving along. We'll go ahead and collect that mini kit and make our way back over. We have a hieroglyphic puzzle that needs solving, so select an academic character, stand in the light, and make sure you match up the pattern that is provided for us here. Once you get that correct, it's going to open the door, and we have some story-based bits that are in need. First off, we're going to build up the ladder on the right-hand side with a push switch. Push it all the way down the checkerboard path until it's at the very end. Go ahead and climb the ladder up top, and you can blast that silver grate and grab a few studs. But it's weird. It's like a secret entrance that just drops you right down below, right where we picked up, or right where we dropped down to, I guess. Weird. Uh, we'll go ahead and drop the first box onto the base plate, giving us some bricks to build up. If you guys remember this from the story, we have four boxes that need to be found. We're going to have the X marks the spot on the ground there. Second one is actually found in the left corner here. We're going to blast away all the tables and the books on the wall there, which reveal a secret lever. We flip that and grab the box and drop it like it's hot. And, of course, build those bricks up to complete that bottom half. Now, next up, we got the one straight ahead of us. It's actually just beyond the little... Uh, uh, what should we call it there? And we'll grab it and drop it like it's hot. Oh, yeah. All right, next up, we've got another one up top. But before we go up there, we're going to go ahead and open up this secret little spot. Now, I did blow up a bunch of stuff here, which left these bouncing tiles. We'll put those tiles together, and it turns out it's a checkerboard path. We'll go ahead and push this statue all the way down to the switch on the end. And it opens up a whole new area up top, giving us some swordage. Which, if you look on the left-hand side of your screen, right there, there's a handheld and a spot to go ahead and take down. I guess it's cut the rope, is what it is. So we'll go ahead and do that. Use the indie pad to whip it good and reveal a push switch. Push it all the way around, obviously on the green side. It puts out a pretty sweet staircase that's also a pain in the tuchus trying to get up. You don't know how many times I failed climbing up those stairs in the story and in the preliminary run. For the, like, I, I'm good at it now, but boy, I sure struggled back in the day. All right, as we get up top here, we're going to switch on over to a thuggy character as they have swords, and we'll make this a little bit easier. If for whatever reason you made it in here and you don't have a thuggy character, there should be some swords on the back wall there, thanks to our puzzle that we solved down below. Now, speaking of puzzles, we got another hieroglyphic puzzle here, so switch to your academic character and go ahead and play a quick game of memory to go ahead and puke out the old box there. We'll go ahead and take it and drop it down below. You can go back down the stairs, but I find this little ledge here easier to drop off. Go ahead and put it in place and go ahead and build it all up, and then the X will officially mark the spot on the ground here. Now we've got a nice new path upstairs, including an indie pad and some bouncing bricks up there that we're going to go investigate. As it turns out, we actually have another push switch on a ladder that we're going to build, and we're going to push it all the way down the checkerboard path into place. That'll give us access up top where we're going to go ahead and work some magic, and you'll see here in a second. We'll go ahead and there we go, put it into place. And then up top, we got a disguise that we have to put on. So pull out the bazooka tuber and blow up the silver stuff on the wall there, which reveals uh, a solution. For us, it was 753. I'm not 100% sure if it's going to be the same for you or not. But what you got to do is go up the ladder and then go ahead and fool him with your disguise. He's going to go ahead and give us the old yes nod, open up this door. We've got access to the back bathroom now. I wondered what that smell was. Go ahead and take out all the baddies in here and then take everything else out. In the end, you're going to build up two toilets. In fact, one of them is just a lid. You have to go and place it in place. Now we're going to jump on each of those commodes and we're going to get that puzzle solution here. So for us, you remember it was 753? Remember that? 
So keep jumping on it until they all match up. When you get the puzzle solved, booyaka show. That mini kit should present itself. Now we're going to go ahead and go out to that indie pad, whip it good, rip down that chandelier, and give us access into a whole new area. Now down here in the catacombs, first off, we see a couple of tombs. We're going to do some tomb raiding, looking for some skeletors. That's right, we found the first of five. And you can tell because it's going to go ahead and spin one of those heads around there, indicating that we need four more in order to lift that gate up. Don't worry, though, we're going to show you where all five of them are right now. They're pretty easy and almost impossible to miss, except for the last one. The last one could easily be overlooked, and, and you'll see once we get there. But we got two of them now. We're going to skip over all of the extra build stuff and all the studdage collecting. We're just going to go straight for the skeletons that we need. Next one is going to be used. Uh, well, we're going to have to use a thuggy statue in order to drop him down, which will give us the third one. Now, we're going to go ahead and advance the story a little bit. So pull out your shovel-wielding character and dig up another box. We'll take it and slap it on the base plate, build it up into a giant fan, man. And then over on the left-hand side, we'll pull this weird spot out, which has a switch on top. Go ahead and yeet yourself up there, step on the switch, and it's going to blow away apparently some dusty walls and reveal another hieroglyphic puzzle. Go ahead and follow this one and solve it. Once you do accurately get it matched up, it will go ahead and crumble the wall. That's a pretty powerful fan. It must be a Dyson fan, huh? <laughs> In this next room, we've got some Spideys. I was having a hard time determining which character I wanted to use to jump across. As you can see, there is a rope dangling there that you could probably use. But the goal is to get to the back and get this torch. Once you get the torch, you can kind of work your way towards these weird, I don't know what, they're like lanterns on the side. And again, with the throwing with that character, if you guys notice that whenever I throw something with her, her blonde hair like flops all over the place, very peculiar. Go ahead, and once you get those torches lit on both sides, blast open the right wall there, and the skeleton will go ahead and flop out, leaving us only one more. Go ahead and jump up and pull the rope down, and use your other character to flip the switch. And in this new area, there is some water. We have to go for a quick swim, and we have to actually get all three of these switches pushed at the same time. That's right, same time, man, same time. If you get them all correctly pressed, it's going to go ahead and release the final skeleton. Now, lucky you, we have to go back all the way and grab that. Now, this is one of my least favorite things to do in videos is to go all the way back. But in this particular case, there is no way to avoid it. Um, I, I don't think this is uh, accumulative. So if you showed up and played this multiple times, I don't think it would count. I think you have to get all five in one run. That's how we did it anyway. So mini kit six officially done. And uh, now we can move on. Keep on with the keeping on, as we like to say. So back to the water room we go. Put on your water wings as we're going to get wet again. No, I'm just kidding. We're actually going to skip that. Going to go up high. And we're going to use this handheld here to get around the corner. We got some trickery we're about to show you here. But we're also going to show you, if you don't act fast enough, how it doesn't work out for you. So you want to pull the rope with your female character. But whilst on it, as soon as you get up there, switch to somebody so, so small and get through that hatch in the back left corner. If you do it correctly, it should put you up top and allow you to go all the way to the right side and dig up this spot, which will drop us down onto a button, which is going to lift up the blockage. And look at that. We can officially sneak in there and grab mini kit number seven. Now we have to get our other character over here because we need both of them in order to access this next section. We're going to certainly need Indy, and we're also going to need somebody like a female character to jump up there and grab that rope. Once that rope is grabbed again, there is a timer that activates that uh, hatch on the right and also these lifts on, sorry, the hatch on the left and the lifts on the right. I pulled the Dougie. Um, and so what we got to do is get up there and whip it not once but twice to go ahead and pull that plug, which will raise this lower area here and give us access to the switches, which I got a little excited and pulled too quickly. And we'll try that again, Brian. All right. And we are almost done did, you guys. So, all right, this is pretty easy. We're going to push this first coffin all the way over to the right edge. Hop up with a female character onto that next ledge. Push the other box down the checkerboard path and tumble it down onto the lower box path. Got that lower. There we go. We'll go ahead and carefully press this into place on the right-hand side. If you remember this from story, we have two of these boxes that need to go right into place. We'll switch on over to Andy and pull this other one down with our whip. All right. Again, carefully place these into place right on top of these squares. And eventually it should lock them up and give us what we need. I have a uh, tremendous trouble with my AI. And then I have tremendous trouble with my <laughs> fingers. Watch this. I got a little excited. I moved too fast. 
Wait till they both get on there and that lower coffin raises the roof. Ah, it just pops up. I guess it's got its floaties on too. I wouldn't think a coffin would float. That's kind of weird, huh? All right, go ahead and push it all the way over to the left-hand side, opposed to pushing it to the back wall. If you jump up and hit that coffin in that back little corner there, it will take you to the next scene, and you cannot come back. So make sure you don't do it until you get that mini kit. Now, in this next area, there are two mini kits left, and, of course, the boss battle itself. So go ahead and give that buddy a cha-cha-cha-cha. He'll take off and hop off, hop in a boat, and then we're going to go ahead and follow suit. Now, I do my best to avoid these pylons or whatever you want to call them the buoys we're going to skip all 10 of those for no Whew, that was close and we're going to go all the way to the far right side why are we doing that we just felt it was easier to knock this mini kit out first and if we got the if we got a buoy it was going to mix them up so we want to get all 10 buoys in a row and then we'll go ahead and get this mini kit based with this crane first so go ahead and hop up there with a repair character like jock Go ahead and repair it. Hop in, move your secondary character up top by hitting the, the B or circle button, depending on which platform you're playing on. Use a female character to jump up on that ledge and then drop off on the right handheld as it will lift that box up. It's kind of a little weight situation here. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and blast the cap off with our bazooka tube, dropping us in there. If you miss it on the way down, don't worry. Just switch to a female character and jump up and snag it. Last but not least, though, as far as collectibles go on this level, we already got the true adventure or the treasure, whatever, requirement, whatever it is. I hate that they call studs treasure in this. And then they also have mini kits that are treasures. It's so confusing. But the goal here is to take out all 10 of these buoys. That's right. All buoy. Take out them buoys. And once we get all 10 of them, we will be rewarded with that lovely 10th and final mini kit for this level. Then all we have to do is just do a little boat ramrod and smash into Buddy uh, two different times to depleter that meter. And then uh, we'll go ahead and jump on him over on the far right side and give him one last cha 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 or knock his block off, as we like to say. But now we've got all the mini kits. We are good to go. We just need to collect the final one. So in order to do that, you got to go to the middle. And we're going to go ahead and, and uh, double whammy it here as we got to knock his block off in the middle. So we'll do that and collect the mini kit whilst doing it. So it's important to remember that once you get all 10 of those buoys, it doesn't automatically connect or collect it. You have to jump up in the middle and do it yourself. Now we officially have all 10 collected. We are officially done did with this level other than taking out those last two hearts. So he's going to hop in for a quick escape. We're going to get back in. Then we go the wrong way. Well, we actually miss him. It's not that we went the wrong way. We just missed him. Missed him by that much. And then we'll go ahead and... For some reason, I was thinking that he only had the two hearts left. I wasn't thinking that the boat had uh, the full four. I was thinking because he only has two that I only needed to hit him twice. So I was kind of lazy on the, uh, the approach there. And then I'm swinging a miss. So that's strike two, technically. Hopefully, I don't strike out. Spoiler alert, I don't. We go ahead and we cut him off here. He takes his boat over to the far right side, right by the propeller blade, which if you've seen the movie, you remember, that definitely has something to do with it. I don't know what's up with Indy and prop blades. Definitely a thing, though, huh? All right, go ahead and jump on his boat. Give him the old cha-cha-cha-cha, and we are out of here. And ironically, as I mentioned before, it did not show us any kind of recognition that we got that red parcel brick normally it shows that we got the red part we got that parcel detector so i don't know if it was like i don't know because it was parcel and it was a parcel detector i don't know it's, it's confusing but check it out we got a bunch of studs in fact we're gonna get some more for completing all 10 of the mini kits or artifacts it's weird that they call them artifacts when they're complete they're treasures when they're not like so many words being used just keep them simple they're mini kits <laughs> We're going to go ahead and call it good, though, boys and girls. That's going to wrap it up for LEGO Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade, Chapter 1, The Hunt for Sir Richard. Free play! We got all 10 mini kits. We got that red parcel brick. We also got that treasure requirement, and we are officially out of here. Guys, check us out on HappyThumbsGaming.com. And as for me, that's going to do it. As always, till next time.